Welcome to the premier broadcast of the Unified Field. And boy, do we have a show lined up for you today. Twenty twelve. Doomsday or Dumbsday? We're going to look at the possible end of the world and everything in between. Because no one knows for certain, do they? Stick around. Yes, indeed. The very first broadcast of the Unified Field, right here on CKDU 88.1 FM. We're in for a ride with this new show. I'm your host, Mr. Justin Brown. And, wow, it's a wallop of one. Uh, the way it's going to go is for the first several shows, uh, I'm going to break it into... Uh, pieces of this major script 2012 doomsday or dumbsday because there's just so much information to cover so much ground to cover and explore uh, to get to the bottom of this from Mayan prophecies to scientific data um, and everything else in between it's gonna be fantastic so without further ado let me just tell you about what the show is gonna be for the f for the next few shows and, but before I do that, I want to let you know what the format's going to be. We're going to have, you know, the, the story for the day, for the program. And then after that, we're going to do what I like to call the Exopolitical Pulse, your weekly paranormal news fix. Uh, but of course, for the next few shows, it's going to be a little bit difficult to uh, give you the latest breaking source on that and the following segment, the, uh, the science and technology news uh, which is supposed to be latest and breaking as well, but I've been collecting news for quite a few months now, and I really want to cover a lot of these news articles rather than stories just so we can come up to date. I may even devote an entire show after the 2012 series um, to the idea of news, just straight up news, because there's so much fun stuff happening uh, in the exopolitical pulse and in science and technology. That's for sure. Crumbling cities collapsing monuments, super storms, volcanic eruptions, monster tsunamis, devastating earthquakes, floods and global destruction, meltdowns of epic and apocalyptic proportions. These are just some of the images and scenes from the doom and gloom crash and bang film 2012 that has swept across the nation. There are hundreds of books and documentaries and lectures about the subject, the latest crop coming from authors such as Daniel Pinchback in the corner of consciousness transformation with 2012, the return of Quetzalcoatl to Lawrence E. Joseph's opposite approach in Apocaly Apocalypse 2012, an investigation into civilization's end. But just how valid are these visions? Well, to civilizations past and present, this may be a very real scenario. Of course, this may all depend on the subjective viewer perspective. However, no matter which side you take, there are countless accounts of a coming cataclysm in one form or another, from the Koran, Revelations, Nostradamus, to Edgar Cayce, and prophets alike. None, however, give us an approximate time frame for said impending doom. 
Enter Maya. According to them, based on their incredibly advanced cyclical calendar system, there is a date. An exact date. An exact year. Not only that, an exact month and an exact day and an exact hour. December 21st, 2012, 11, 11 a.m., the winter solstice. An exact end to a calendar so advanced that it rivaled modern timekeeping systems until the advent of the nuclear clock. Until then, the calendar was only moments off, off of perfection. Incredibly, this calendar spanned thousands of years, and some claim even longer periods of time. Time reaching far back into galactic beginnings, even. The time of the Big Bang, and giving that a date. All of that from a so-called primitive civilization, personified as bloodthirsty heathens in Mel Gibson's Apocalypto. But does this date signify the end of mankind? Perhaps it's nothing. Perhaps it's just a normal galactic cycle where we enter the exact center of the galactic plane, destined to rise over the dark rift, and to begin a new ebb tide sine wave cycle through the spiral arm of the galaxy, just a naturally occurring cycle? Or perhaps crossing this rift means something else entirely. As the new cycle begins again, a great leap in the evolution of consciousness? The end of the Earth? Or nothing at all? Perhaps there is a coming cataclysm of biblical proportions brought on by a cosmic collision? Or an abundance of some form of condensed energy or gravity concentrated at the rift? Perhaps there will be some form of energy reversal, like the switching on of the magnetic poles once we pass the galactic center, spelling the end of mankind. Hmm, very interesting indeed, is it not? Spelling the end of mankind, you say? You could almost liken the energy reversal created by passing the equator, like, like the reversal of water flow drainage from north to the south pole. Will there be some form of magnetic or electrical energy reversal? Or will it all come down in a major massive solar flare or storm, culminating in 2012 as predicted by Mikyu Kaku, more or less? He doesn't disagree that we should be prepared as we enter a period of intense solar activity, a society so dependent on communication systems that rely on our modern electrical frequency-driven grid should be. A major solar flare could name the end of such a system easily disrupted by the forces of the cosmos. So what's it going to be? Doom or bloom? Join me, Justin Brown, as we probe these questions and search for the answers as the final countdown begins. Right here on the unified field. Hi, I'm Heather from the Ecology Action Center, and if you aren't familiar with us, we are Nova Scotia's oldest environmental organization. Located